Good morning all. Today I'm going to look at this. It's um, a little battery capacity tester, uh, electronic DC load, that sort of thing. Um, it's the Model Tech 06 and uh, this has been very kindly supplied by icstation.com. So uh, thanks very much to IC Station and I'll put a link to this device in the description below the video. So this device um, can do battery discharge tests um, up to 3.5 amps uh, or with a max power of 16 watts. Um, it's a linear discharger. You can see that there's a three terminal device there, some sort of transistor. It's uh, screwed onto the bottom of a heatsink here and mounted on top of the heatsink is this fan. Now, if the power dissipation is up to 2.2 watts, it doesn't turn the fan on more than that and it will turn the fan on. Okay, power supply for this unit is five volts. It's a mini uh, B USB. So let's get straight into this and power it up. I'm actually gonna use this power bank, uh, which I'm charging at the moment from another power bank. The reason I'm gonna use this one is because this one has the ability to switch off the auto off. Um, standard power bank, this wasn't drawing enough power in its standby mode and this thing kept switching off. So this is the power bank I'm gonna use. So let's plug that in. It goes that way round and switch on. Uh, this takes a few seconds to switch on. Let's see what happens when it does come on. So it said V6.25, I think that's probably the firmware and it did a quick fan test. And now it's showing amp hours, accumulated amp hours, nothing on the display at the moment because we haven't run a test yet. Um, just one comment about the position of this 5 volt uh, input socket. I really wish it had been on the side or on the top because when you're attaching things to the uh, four pin connector here and adjusting this knob, this is really in the way. So if they do make an, a new version, uh, please move that around to the other side. That would be very handy. Right, the first thing I'm going to do is replace um, this protective cover on the display with some red insulation tape uh, here because that just makes filming it a lot easier. We'll get much better contrast even with my sort of front lit uh, lighting conditions. So let's just sort that out. Right, let's go through the display options. Uh, the top LED indicates amp hours, and this actually goes up to 500 amp hours, which is a lot. Yes, you could even test the capacity of these three massive marine lead acid batteries, 110 amp hours each, 330 amp hours. Uh, but of course, with a maximum discharge rate of 16 watts, that would take a fair amount of time. Okay, the next LED um, this is all in Chinese, but it indicates the voltage of the battery that's connected to these connections. There's nothing there at the moment. The next one is the voltage down to which it will discharge, um, at which point it will switch off. So I've currently set that for six volts. At six volts, uh, discharge voltage or battery voltage, it will stop the discharge test. Um, this is the discharge current in milliamps. So I've set it quite low, 100 milliamps. Now I'm just going to show how you set these parameters. You just click the button and that one will flash. Um, it goes down to 50 milliamps and then you've got 100 milliamps, 150, 200, and it looks like it goes up in 50 milliamp increments. But I'm going to leave that set to uh, 100 milliamps. And then the next display is milliohms. Now you'll only get a milliohms reading if you connect this connector in four wire mode. Uh, the way you do that is you connect the battery through high current connections to the I input, plus and minus, and then you put additional wires on. They can be very thin wires, of course, um, directly from the V plus and minus connections to the battery terminals to read voltage um, directly from the terminals of the battery. Now, I got this unit um, because I'm particularly interested in testing 9 volt batteries, and today I'm going to test this uh, no-name, well, it is a God P uh, eBay cheapy, it's very low capacity, um, which means that things will happen quickly, which is good. I'm going to test this. I've made up a little uh, connector. It's a little uh, battery connector with a couple of really rather oversized pins on it to go into these connections. So let's connect that up. Now you put them into the I input. So I need positive into positive here and negative into uh, negative. Let's clamp that down. 
with these um, Phillips or cross point or posi drive or whatever they might be uh, screws and let's connect the battery now we should see because I've switched it to this second LED which is the live battery voltage we should see that come up immediately I connect that now this has just come off my charger let me show you my charger um, it's this one it's the PowerX MHC 490F Stealth it's just come off there the green light was on so this thing um, was sitting there in trickle charge so it's got quite a high voltage and now we can start doing a discharge test so what did I set this to um, for the milliamps? Uh, 100? No, I think I'm going to go more aggressive than that. I think I'm going to set that to 200 milliamps. I really want to uh, take the voltage of this down quick, quickly. So let's set that. Uh, no milliohm reading, of course, because we're not using four wire. I'm not going to do four wire in this video. If you're interested in four wire, I can perhaps do another video showing that. I just want to do a, a, an overview of this device in this uh, video. Now, if you press the button in either of these first two positions, it starts the test. So let's do it um, watching the voltage. And after I press the button, that LED will start to flash. I think there may be some contact bounce there. Oh, there it goes. So the voltage starts to head rapidly down because it's under uh, 200 milliamps of uh, linear but constant current discharge. Now you can also switch this back to uh, amp hour so we can see the accumulated amp hours. Uh, the decimal points there, so this digit here is milliamp hour, so it's done one milliamp hour of discharge. Um, it looks like you can also look at these other settings. Um, our end voltage is six volts, our discharge current is 200 milliamps. Um, but it also seems that you can actually change these as well. So I could um, increase that to 250 milliamps. Now that sets the fan off because it's gone over 2.2 watts. Take it down to 200 milliamps again. Fan goes back off. And that appears to just continue with the test. We're at 8.97 volts now. And we've got 2 milliamp hours of accumulated discharge. Now while that sits there discharging. Oh, we can't see that display very well, can we? Um, I ought to angle that up. But just for a moment, I want to show um, some batteries that I've recently bought. Um, I recently bought some more of these Vapex Instant. These are the low self-discharge, the LSD batteries, which hold their charge for, I don't know, a year or whatever. 200 milliamp hours, that one. I also bought a Vapex, or a couple of these actually, 280 milliamp hours. It's not low self-discharge, um, but you get the extra capacity because of that. And I also bought this Energizer, um, which actually rates itself at 175 milliamp hours. It does look like the form factor of that. Is a bit smaller than the others. I wonder if that would fit in that really awkward battery holder I had. I think I might have chucked it away. But uh, yes, I have tested all of these and the God P battery, and the results are here. I'll go through them in a moment. Now, I've looked at other electronic DC loads um, in the past. This one I think we can pretty much discount because it's just got a big resistor there. So it looks like this one isn't a constant current discharge. Um, it does say that it goes up to uh, 9999 amp hours, which is completely crazy. Um, I seem to remember this one was um, 3 amps maximum. We've got two displays on here. And uh, this one takes a 12 volt or probably a range of voltages that includes 12 um, on the input. Um, I seem to remember the minimum uh, current on this one was 200 milliamp hours, which was a bit high for little batteries like this. Although I believe volt log, I think it was volt log, uh, did a modification which meant he could get it down to 20 milliamps. Uh, so this big one is the ZU uh, ZPB30A1 version 2.7 and then there was this one the um, ZB206 plus version 1.3 and I got this for testing nine volt these 9 volt batteries but I seem to remember that the input on this could only go up to um, 8.5 volts or something like that. I'll just check that actually. Yeah, maximum battery voltage on this is 8.5 volts, which was a real irritation because these batteries fully charged start at about 10 volts. So uh, that wasn't suitable really for my uh, 9 volt battery tests. Okay, let's see how this one is doing. We're down to 8.42 volts. We've got 26 um, milliamp hours of uh, discharged charge, I suppose you'd call it. Um, so this Tech 06 unit can take a battery, uh, maximum battery voltage input of 15 volts and you can set the um, 
trigger voltage, the voltage down to which it will discharge, to a maximum of 12 volts. So yes, you could do the lead acid batteries um, on this unit. Now, I'm not expecting brilliant things from this Goop or God P battery because inside it looks like that. It's got just uh, seven of these tiny little cylindrical nickel metal hydride um, cells. On the other hand, the Vapex Instant 200, I took one of those apart recently, and it looks like that. Much better use of the internal space. It's pretty much all battery. Right, we've so far got 37 milliamp hours out of this God P battery. Shall we take a look at the results for the uh, Vapex Instant, the Vapex 280 and the Energizer? Here they are. Um, the God P battery, which I nicknamed God Awful, um, only managed 68 milliamp hours. And that's not surprising because it's got very poor use of internal space. These little nickel metal hydride cells, which you normally find in solar garden lights. So that's all that managed. Um, the Vapex Instant, 200 milliamp hours, this unit actually reported it as 197 milliamp hours, which is pretty good, very close to the indicated um, capacity. The Vapex 280 actually did 278 milliamp hours. Quite surprising how close these numbers are to the actual rated capacities. And the Energizer was probably the best of the lot. It has a very... Um, conservative 175 milliamp hours rating it actually did 186 milliamp hours right the goop battery is up to 45 milliamp hours and we're down to 8.26 volts now i just want to talk a little bit about the user interface um sometimes these things have user interfaces which are just either unfathomable or when you come to use it after not using it for a while you can't remember it i feel that this one is just about at that sort of point where it's um, there's little enough on here to remember how to use it um, so that you could come to this thing and just use it straight away without having to uh, go to any sort of manual. There is a very good description on IC Station's website in the product listing for this, um, giving full details of how to use it, how to wire it up with diagrams and so on. But uh, let me just talk about these flashing lights. When the uh, LEDs in this bank here, this bank of five LEDs, are flashing it means that the test is underway it's actually discharging the battery we're down to 8.2 volts when the display flashes it means that the test has completed ah now i should qualify these results these were done at 100 milliamps and uh, on this battery at the moment we're probably not going to get quite as good results because i'm doing it at 200 milliamps so these were really done in order to try and get the best possible results um, 100 milliamps. I also took all these batteries directly off the charger so they were at their maximum voltage in trickle charge mode and I'm running this down as you can see here to 6 volts to try and extract the maximum possible amount of uh, charge out of these batteries again to try and give the most impressive results. Right the God P battery is under 7 volts and heading rapidly south shall we see how it's doing in terms of milliamp hours oh that's almost as good as that that's interesting this might actually outperform um its discharge at 100 milliamps discharging at 200 milliamps that's extraordinary i'll let that finish um so that you can see that the display goes from flashing five leds here to uh, a flashing display and then we'll check the final result in fact, why don't I sit here and watch that go all the way to uh, 6 volts and I'll speed this bit up in post. Right, so it's just about to hit 6 volts. Um, it will finish the discharge sequence. The flashing switches over to the other display and we can see that it managed 68 milliamp hours again, discharging at 200 milliamps, uh, whereas I did that one at 100 milliamps. And uh, so finally, if you want to uh, start another test, uh, put it on the uh, display for amp hours, press and hold the button for three seconds. That clears the display back to zero and you're ready to start another test. Uh, just a quick look at the underside of this uh, board. We'll take a look at these integrated circuits. So here we have um, a TM1620, which is some sort of display driver chip. Uh, it's directly under the display there. Uh, we've got a microcontroller here. It's an STC. Uh, what is it? 
Well, it looks like either I2C or 1,2C, 5,6,1,2,AD. Um, I do believe this has a digital to analog converter in it, and that's how they're driving uh, the little transistor that's under the heatsink there. And then this is an LM324 quad op amp, the usual suspects. So I think I'm quite liking this Tech uh, 06 battery discharge tester. I mean, the proof will be whether I actually use it. So if you start seeing this in future videos, you'll know that it's become my favorite battery discharger unit. And uh, I do feel that the user interface is that perfect sort of combination of um, available features coupled with a user, a user interface that you can actually remember how to use when you come at this thing after a, a few weeks of not using it. Uh, so big thanks once again to IC Station for sending me the Tech 06. Cheerio.